Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to on Numbers chapter 12 this morning. Children's Church will be dismissed. I desire your attention this morning. I want to welcome those that are visiting. Glad to have you. You're not a visitor. You're not here by mistake. You're here because God sent you here. Numbers. It's one of the most challenging uh, books in the Bible that Moses faced as leader with Israel. And uh, I'm going to preach a message today that I have never actually preached. God began to deal with me on this Monday. And that's a rarity that the Lord will speak something into my spirit. And um, I could say probably there's no message any more challenging than others. But this has been a challenging message. Because it's going to really uh, speak to every one of us from me right on down to you. So I just want to challenge you to put your spiritual seat belts on. And I'm going to stand behind my, uh, what do you want to call this, podium today. My, sh my shield <laughs> from the fiery darts. Chapter 12. I'm going to read about 15 verses. I'm going to need to lay the foundation down to where we're going to be going today. Be in prayer for all the things going on here at the church up and coming. Chapter 12. Miriam and Aaron. This was Moses' oldest sister and the brother. Spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken unto us? Also by us, and the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and came unto Aaron and Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all my house? With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And in the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Or basically... Why were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses is what he's saying here. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed. And the cloud departed off from the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not this sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly, wherein we have sinned. Listen to what he's saying there. Let, not her, let her not be as one of the dead whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Hear her now, O God, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days, lest her shut out from the camp seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days. And after that, let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not. It held up traffic here. It journeyed, they journeyed not until Miriam was brought again. God, I desire your anointing today as I speak to this beautiful congregation, your people, as you have trusted me with your word. I pray that you would bring out of me what you have put into me, and that we would clear our minds. And that when we leave, we would leave differently in Jesus' name. And everybody said, I want to speak to you today on a subject title, my tongue. My tongue is killing me. My tongue is killing me. I don't know of anything as believers that we overlook more than what comes out of our mouth. We, we don't do this. We don't go to the clubs. We don't do this. We don't do that. But have you ever thought about, we never, we never think second about what comes out of our mouth. Everybody okay? We're just getting started. We never think about our tongue. All this other stuff we wouldn't dare do. But yet when it comes to what comes out of our mouth, our tongue is killing us. The tongue is one of man's biggest hindrances. I'm going to do some scripture reading today. I want to read what the half-brother James said. We all know this. Listen to what he says. 
The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and birds and serpents and of the sea is tamed, have, have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue no man can tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therefore we curse men which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things should not be. He goes on here to say, doeth a fountain bring forth the same place a, a bitter and sweet water? Then notice what Jesus says. This is the Son of God about the same subject. O generation of vipers, you being evil, how can you speak things out of the abundance of the heart? The mouth speaketh. A good man out of the treasure of his heart bringeth forth things out of an evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. He goes on here to say, uh, that you will give an account every idle word for the words that, you know you shall be justified and the words uh, you shall be condemned he also said Christ said it's not that which uh, cometh into the mouth that defileth us but that which cometh out in 10 minutes the tongue in 10 minutes time our tongue can tear down what it has taken 10 years to build and I'm preaching from me to you this morning because me and you in this room has got a problem and it's this thing that's between our teeth. I don't care how many tongues we speak in. I don't care how many fastings we fast. I and you have, have destroyed things with our tongue. And when we get out of here today, we're going to see the damage that our tongue does. We don't drink. We don't dip. We don't chew. We don't go to the clubs. But honey, we will gripe and talk and gossip and run down and beat and judge like there's no tomorrow. And we don't even think about it. We're all guilty of it. I mean, there's some things you just, I mean, there's some things that it's not wrong. Sorriness is sorry. And it's not wrong to say, hey, they're sorry. It's not wrong to say if you don't work, you shouldn't be eating. None of that is wrong. Don't misinterpret me. Let's look at what's right and what's wrong here. I mean, what's right thinking, but that's not what we're talking about today. That's not what Miriam and, what Miriam and Aaron had concocted here. Biblical truth is biblical truth. Sinfulness and ungodliness being called out, that's not an unruly tongue. We are talking about believers. Now this is from a believer's standpoint. We're not talking about people in the world. James was preaching to the church. Miriam, Aaron, and Moses, they were the three of uh, the key factors outside of Joshua that led the Israeli people out of Egypt, that led Israel. If you don't believe the tongue can do damage, look at Israel. They spent 40 years on an 11-day journey all because all they knew how to do was complain and tear down and gripe and bellyache and God just finally said hey you're going to die out there I'm going to supply your needs because I promised it to Abraham but you're not going to control your tongue so I'm going to just withhold my favor and I'll give it to your offspring when it comes to the tongue we thank you bless you we're all guilty of this well I spoke before I thought we're all guilty of that but the problem is, can I just get down and dirty and do our laundry? I mean, we preach sanctification, but our tongue is not sanctified. Some of you that talk to me about sanctification, your tongue ain't even sanctified. Mine included. I'm not exempt from this. All Scripture is given for correction. And sometimes correction begins at the house of God. There's nothing wrong. Nobody's been gossiping. The Lord spoke this in my hat Monday morning as I was uh, having a beautiful day in the neighborhood, as Brother Roger says. I'm thinking, man, I ain't never preached on that. I can't preach on that. I'm thinking, I can't preach on that. I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me from above. Our tongue is a little bitty member. but It does more damage. I'm going to tell you, in my first pastorate, I learned very quickly the power of the tongue. There are some people that have a, a, a MOS, a, a, a ministry of sowing discord. And I think, you know, they are instituted by the devil and, and he sends them to places and all they do is sow discord. And you know what? The devil cannot stand a fellowship of God's people getting together and fellowship. And there's always somebody jawing and gnawing and nagging like a feist dog. We had had this fellowship. I can't remember what it was. It's about 20 some odd years ago. But we had some 
guy, bless his heart. And I mean, the, the best was not good enough for him. I mean, he griped and he belly ached and he began to jaw at some function we had at the church and he began to sow discord with that one and that one. And there it was on a Saturday night and I was up till 2.30 in the morning trying to get peace established knowing we had church the next morning all because somebody could not control their tongue. This is the same man that fussed me out because I didn't visit him when he had outpatient surgery because he had blessed carpal tunnel surgery on his hand. Now, man, I called him out on it. I mean, let me tell you something. A preacher's priority is to preach the gospel. Anybody can ride up down the road and visit people. And I, I visit, you know that, and I'm not here to throw that under the bus. But Jesus didn't say, I want you to be, a, Jesus didn't call me to be a visitor. He called me to be a preacher. And visiting comes with that, and it just comes with the territory, amen? That's just like everything else. I mean, like studying and all of the above. I mean, you're going to visit. How well do they visit? I don't want to be known in hell as a visitor. Just I want to be known in hell as a preacher that's tore up the kingdom of the devil and that's destroyed his kingdom and helped people come to Christ, amen? But this guy was gnawing and jawing. That's what I call it, gnawing and jawing. We're all guilty of it. I've done it and you've done it. And the good thing about the Holy Spirit is Paul said we're sealed with the Spirit until the day of redemption. That is the Spirit's job and his, that's the agent of the Spirit is to correct us and to chasten us. And honey, the Spirit will correct us. Can I get a witness? It will let us know when we speak and we shouldn't have spoken. It will conduct us. And thank God for that. And you know, that is, we, we all fall here. We're, we're not, you know, we're not so perfect that we don't fall. I know some people think that way and they act that way, but you're not. You're not perfect, okay? Nobody was perfect but Jesus Christ. I'm not perfect and you're not perfect, amen? Even though I fast three days, three days out of the week and I'm not perfect and you're not perfect but there was one perfect man and his name was Jesus Christ he was perfect and we're striving for the mastery but the, the agent of the, the spirit's job is to correct us and keep us on course. As Paul said, you know, we had earthly fathers. When I got out of control, my daddy had a belt, and it got me back in line, amen? I don't know what yours did. It might have been a switch. It might have been time out. But at any, any rate, there was a, a means of correction in the home, and that's something we all know we're lacking today, amen? But anyway, we're not here to talk about uh, parental raising and so on. But likewise, as believers, the Spirit is the agent of correction that corrects me and you. And when we get to the place that the Holy Spirit will not correct us that we think we're so perfect because we don't do this, that, and the other because we got a little bit of conviction, then we can never be used and be of a benefit of God because the Spirit is looking people that He can correct and keep on course because we grow through correction. Amen? We learn from our mistakes and we grow when we are corrected and we learn from our mistakes. Amen? And by tongue damage we learned the next time around the block, I'm not going to fail the test because I'm going to control my tongue a little bit better than I did before. I mean, we're all guilty of it. I keep repeating that. So don't think that just because we've said something or done something that, you know, that, this, this is something we all deal with. It's something we don't like to address. We don't like to talk about. As long as we're talking about them out there and everything, we're hanging, we're praising God. But this is something that is scripturally that we must address and we have to look at because it is a tool that Satan uses. And brothers and sisters, before I give you the rundown of this story and, and, and break down the story to point out the, the, the dangers of the tongue, Satan wants nothing more but to destroy the, the work of God. Meaning in a church, you know things can be going great and good. I've seen this. I grew up in it. You've seen it. Things can be going good. And all it takes is for some red to get licked off some candy. And then people just go berserk. But you know what's interesting to me? I've thought about this thing after the Lord called me into ministry. You know, we can go to McDonald's 20 times and they'd be out of coffee and we still go. But you let one thing go wrong at church, bless God, and it's posted all over Facebook, you get letters mailed to you, you get all kinds of stuff. But people will go to Walmart and they'll be out of soap for a blessed month, but they still go to Walmart. But when it comes to the house of God, are you with me? When you really get saved, when you really, really, really get a hook in Jesus, you're going to stay in the house of God. If they rubbed you the wrong way, you're going to turn around and let them rub it the right way. Amen? Because we learn we are human beings. 
We are all sinners saved by grace. And we should see beyond it. As Paul said, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities of darkness and of evil that are in high places. Sister Oni's not my enemy. I'm not her enemy. There is a devil loose, and he's seeking whom he may devour. He's not in hell with pitchforks. He's trying to tear the house of God down. He's trying to tear the people of God down. He's trying to tear me down. He's trying to tear you down. He's trying to destroy any and everything. As I brought it out last Sunday, I have something the devil will never have and that is eternal life. You have something, Sister Peggy, that the devil lost. I have eternal life. And you that are saved, we have eternal life. He don't have it, so therefore he's going to try to destroy us. Amen? So therefore, we understand the tongue. I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm not trying to, you know, like try to be a, a school teacher to us. But multitudes, we are killing ourselves. We're not growing spiritually. We're not getting where we need to get to because our tongue is killing us. We all have a bad day. We all have days that we complain. Thank you for the five amens. We all have days we complain. We all have days we get emotional, we get discouraged, we get depressed. I mean, that's, that is what it is. I'm not saying it's okay, but it's human. You and I both know that, amen? Amen. And I'm just as saved. I'm on my way to heaven. I take my last breath. I'm going to heaven. But it is what it is. And we all deal with those days. However, a condemning, complaining, criticizing spirit. God cannot stand it. If you notice this, it says God heard them. God heard the man and woman condemning another man. I'm not here to talk about Moses being a man of God or any of that. What I'm trying to say is you got three people here you got a brother and a sister condemning another brother for something they didn't like, who was an Ethiopian woman. She was not probably Ethiopian of the nationality, but she was, a, she was probably could more than likely believe that it was a Jew that was in Ethiopia that, you know, like if I was in Germany right now, I'd be, I would be considered a German uh, citizen even though I'm an American. But anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Miriam and Aaron. Why did God just... Take it so strong on Miriam and not Aaron. Who knows? She was the oldest, so maybe he, God held her to a higher accountability. Because God holds us to a higher accountability. And when we can't control our tongue, we're just like an immature baby running around. Amen? I mean, I don't know. You know, probably this is not the best thing, but we can come and shout to the high heavens. But if we don't control our tongue, that's everything. We are the only, we are a representative of Jesus Christ. And what people see is Jesus. And if they see us gnawing and jawing and, and, and complaining and talking about everybody in the church and, or whoever it is, my co, all of that. You understand what I'm saying? I was in a checkout line one day. And all this lady could do the whole 15 minutes I was there was complain about the company she worked with, complain about they weren't doing it right, complain about how she was going to lay out and not give them a notice. I had to hear that the whole time. And instead of, I'm thankful I got a job. I'm thankful I got health in my bones and I got breath in my lungs. You see, that's two ways to look at things. I'm thankful I got the ability to run this cash register. I think I'm not laying on my back collecting a check like the rest of them that could be out working. Somebody say amen. I'm thankful that I'm blessed to have a job probably making 15, but I don't know, probably make 20 bucks an hour using a cash register today. Who knows? Amen. But you see what I'm saying? As James said, out of the tongue comes cursing and, and, and blessing. We cannot afford it. Amen? God expects us. If we discipline our members not to go to certain places and watch certain things. No, and we shouldn't. We shouldn't be watching naked programs and all that nonsense. But we should also discipline our tongue. And there's going to always be something that's going to push our buttons. And the thing is, when we fail, we need to make it right. None of us is perfect. The hardest thing I struggle with in Christendom... Because the way it was put to me that unless you're perfect, you're not going to heaven. Well, I haven't had more sense than to believe that. Well, now I know and understand clearly that I'm living in a fallen world. I'm living in a sinful world. And until I get out of here, the sinful nature is everywhere around. And it's going to push my buttons and it's going to push your buttons in every way you can think of. But when we fall, we need to get up immediately and make it right. And we need to move on. Because our tongue 
can do more damage. It can destroy. It can run people away. And they will not come back. You remember back in the day when I was a little bit younger here? You know, we'd have people in the church. They'd go berserk if you were in here with a, with a Dr. Pepper in your hand. But they'll sit and talk the whole time the man of God's preaching. Honey, you know I ain't going to hold nothing back. I'll give it to you in a double barrel. You're going to sit there and talk while a man of God's preaching, Joni. But you'll go berserk if Andrew or, one, or the, the Sanderlands come in here with a bag of peanuts. Hold it, eating in the church. Da, 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 da. Well, what is wrong with you? You sitting there talking while an anointed man of God is preaching. And you worried about somebody with a blessed Dr. Pepper. No, you don't need to be eating Dr. Pepper and peanuts. Drinking Dr. Pepper and eating peanuts. But you don't need to be having a conversation either. It's one thing to tell your wife, I think I left a stove on. But I've literally seen people just have a full-blown conversation. And then we try to give an altar call and pray over it. I mean, the house of God is sacred. It's just as sacred. No, we're not going to come in here naked. No, we're not going to come in here whatever. But you know what? We're going to come in here the right way. And we're going to come in here with the mind of Jesus. And that means everything has got to be set aside. Amen. Not just two or three things I don't like. Amen. It don't work that way. It works the way God works it. And God's way is the right way, and it's the only way. And God's way says everything. Anything that God wouldn't do, we don't need to be doing. Let's look at Miriam here. All of a sudden, she decided she was going to call it on herself. I want to talk about it this morning. I'm going to give you the breakdown. This is what happens when we do not control our tongue. It kills us. You may not think this. I know personally we have the things we say. The Bible says that. I don't believe in name it and claim it. But I know there is more to Christianity and there's more to godliness than condemnation and dogmatica and you're not good enough and all of that. There's a time and place. But we are created out of God's likeness and out of God's image. You understand what I'm saying? So God didn't create me just to kick me around and to talk about how ignorant I was and all this kind of nonsense. Amen, like I've heard some people put it. Because we are a byproduct of Jesus Christ. And Brother Wells, when they see us, they see Jesus. They should be seeing Jesus. They should be hearing Jesus. I shouldn't have to tell them, I'm a preacher. I'm a church member. I've been baptized. I take communion. Honey, they should see it in us. They should hear it in us. Somebody shared with me the other day. They said, every time that person comes around, I want to roll, roll over and crawl. Because all they do, they're just so against everybody. And there are people that get under our skin. As a preacher, you know who gets under my skin. People that can go everywhere, but to the house of God gets under my skin. They're everywhere, but in the house of God. I mean, you see them here, you see them there. Oh, they're over there, they're up there. They're on the airplane, they're, they're, they're in Hawaii. They're everywhere you go, but they just can't come to church. Somebody help me. So we all got some that pulls our chain. It's okay to let it preach. Just go on. Though. Don't, don't keep pulling it. Amen. Because the more you pull it, the more the devil's going to arrive at you. I've learned to give it to the Lord. I've just learned to let it go. Amen. Because, you know, I was raised in a generation. I mean, believers, they were just in the house of God. That's the way it was. It was not like it is today that, well, I'm here and I'm there. And you know how it is, man. We're just too busy and, you know, uh, all of the above. So I, I've just learned to not pull that chain. Amen. Because when you pull some chains... Some doors open, and we don't need to see what's on the other side. But if you don't pull the chain, the door won't open. <laughs> Think about that thing. And so therefore, you can live mentally intact. Miriam, I want to talk about something this morning. Miriam's tongue brought her sickness. I want to talk about something. Sickness comes to everybody. If we live this side of glory, we're going to get sick in our body. There are sometimes God allows things for reasons. Sometimes God will allow things to get... For people to get closer to him, you and I have seen that. Uh, unbelievers to come to Christ, different things. Um, and so on. Uh, you know, that there's, there's different things that, that happen, you know, with the, the, the cold season and so on. But there are some people that stay sick all the time, and they should not stay sick all the time. The, the Bible says, the Bible says, I will put none of these diseases on you. So how do you explain that to me? Amen? How many knows that's what the Bible says? Some people... Because they cannot control their tongue, there's something wrong with them continuously. If you study, even my son, even your son, my son is disabled. He cannot, he, he's nonverbal, all of the above. But Andrew does not have a, a, he does not stay sick all the time. You understand what I'm saying? 
There's not just something wrong with them all the time. I'm not here, there, and everywhere. With, no, it's not that way. Even in his state, even in Daniel's state, is the same way. And whoever else may be uh, developing a delay. We know that some people have different things. They, they go through the process. They may have cancer. They have a port where they do the, the treatments for the rest of their life or whatever, the dialysis. That's what I'm looking for. There's different things there. I'm not saying your tongue's brought that on you. But what I'm trying to say is some people, I've met people that cannot understand why their body cannot get better. Sometimes it's because they don't control their tongue. They run people down. They run the church down. They run everybody down. Nothing good is in that mouth other than some teeth probably. Miriam's tongue brought sickness. I mean, the Bible tells it. Look at it, what it says here. Let me get back behind his shield. Notice what the wisest man in the world said. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. It brought sickness. Verse 10 says... The cloud departed from off them. Miriam became leprous. Miriam was not sick. You, know, you follow me this morning? Miriam was not sick until she started running off at the mouth. You go home and read this story. Think about it. She was not sick until she started talking. You don't have to believe me. You read it for yourself. Here was a woman who didn't have leprosy, which was a sickness. But now she's got it. You know why she had it? Because she decided she was going to run her mouth and talk about a man of God, a person of God. It don't matter if you're talking about a preacher. I mean, yeah, it says touch not my nose, do my prophets no harm. But it don't matter if you're, who you're, if we're talking about anybody, we shouldn't be talking about, bless you. We're opening the door to sickness. You understand what I'm saying? I told somebody one time, I said, when we get to heaven, some people ain't going to need a glorified body because they've had everything replaced. <laughs> the Lord's just going to say, come on in, you got it all. Hey, man, that's a good place to laugh. I mean, it's one thing to have one replacement, but I mean, you keep going. I mean, man, they got elbows, knees, eyes, ball. I mean, they got it all. Hey, man, chin. When the Lord's going to say, just come on. Hey, I, you, I didn't give yours while you were on that side of glory. <laughs> that is a good place to laugh. <laughs> but at any rate, we have to have what we have to have. But the woman's tongue brought sickness. I want you to think about this thing. I want you to think about it personally. And this is just for me personally because the way I was raised and taught from my parents because their view on things. If and when I get sick, the first thing I do is I, I'm like, God, what's happening here? Yada, yada, yada. Because I take the Bible for what it says. I, I take it literally. I don't take it for that day. I take it for it says, I will put none of these diseases on you. I believe what it says. If it says, ask and you shall receive, I believe what it says. If it says, refrain from the very appearance of evil, I'm, I'm, I need to stay away from it, amen? If it says, if I hide iniquity in my heart, the Lord won't hear me, then I want my heart clean, right? I want my eyes clean. As Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look at another maid. What Job was saying was, I made a covenant with my eyes, men. I'm not going to be looking at something that's going to cause me to lust and think things I shouldn't say. And the men said, amen. So I take it for what it says. But Miriam's tongue brought sickness. Think about that thing. So some people can bring things on their self. Some things we inherit, if you, we know that, people that's worked around asbestos, you know, we've heard that, or, or people that's worked around certain uh, chemicals and all of the above. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of stuff like that. No, they didn't bring that on them. But what I'm trying to say is, here was a woman that was not sick. But because of her tongue, she got sick. What we say can affect everything about us. So if you're sick all the time, there's something not right with that picture. And I'm going to tell you, as a man of God, that's not even the Word of God. The Word says we're not supposed to be that way. We go through seasons. We're not supposed to be that way. I mean, look, at we, we, we've seen people check out of here 85, 90 years old that live great and healthy right up until the last day. That ought to be an encouragement for us. Amen, we're still seeing it today. So that is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Yes, we have situations, but this woman, they was a non-sickness but because of what she began to talk about a man of God a person of God she got sick when I saw this it really got it got a hold of me I'm like the woman got sick she was not sick until she started running her mouth that's interesting isn't it that lets me know that I need to be careful you remember that song be careful little ears what you hear well, let's talk about be careful tongue what you say this is, we're all dealing under the old covenant dispensation. But that doesn't mean, well, it's in the Old Testament, so we're going to throw it out and we don't put no, that. That don't mean that. By no means does that mean that. Everybody okay this morning? I mean, I think everybody's got their attention on this one. But her tongue also brought shame. God heard it. 
he was displeased. Verse 9 says, The anger of God was kindled against them. When we speak things we shouldn't, God not only hears it, but it makes him mad. Just as me going out to the ABC store today or whatever might make God mad, me not controlling my tongue makes God mad. What part of that don't we understand? Have you heard? (laughs) Have you heard? Let me tell you about this one over there. We're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of doing it. We're all guilty of listening at it. But saints of God, it's wrong. We should not do it. If it's a humorous way about the phone book, that's a different story. (laughs) That's an inside joke. But if this guy down here has got five women, he's whatever, yada, 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 you know what, that's him. I don't need to tell it, and I sure don't need to hear it. Unless it's dealing with something involved with the church where we need to know. But it's in our nature. It's just like we're on the duck's back, amen? I better quote Peter later on, but I got a verse by Peter on the quote. But her, her tongue brought shame. God got mad. You see, God holds us to a higher accountability. We're not out there lost in the world, ignorant and undone. He don't expect us to, 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 be, to, to be like the world. Not by no means. For all them years we preach, you know, you, and I still preach it and believe it, you don't look like the world, you don't like it. But you know what? We don't talk like them. And our tongue should be different than theirs. But when they get around us and they can't see anything different than them and we're just shooting everybody down and everything, they've already read the Bible. They're seeing us right now. You see what I'm saying? The Bible says if you got all against your brother, go to them. Not go behind their back and sow discord. Matter of fact, the Son of God said that. Jesus said if you got all with your brother, go to them. Don't talk about him to everybody. Don't run him down like we do. Like we've been ordained of somebody by, to do that. I know this is not easy, but we need to hear this. I need to hear this. I'm a man of God and I need to hear it. As your pastor, I need not only to hear it, I've got to deliver it. I'm not here to get a check. God didn't call me into the money business. God called me to preach. Whether there's money or not, I'm not scared to work. We've been working the last two days. So, I mean, I was preaching before money came, and I'll probably be preaching after it in the millennial, amen? So I didn't come by that way. It ain't nothing going to scare me. Ain't nobody going to scare me. You know, you get some of these places, thank God we're not like this, but you get some of these places that's controlled, and you say something that offends some money, man, and, boy, they go berserk, and they'll be called falcon up on you, amen? Thank God we ain't got that problem here, and I ain't say it liberally. Thank God we ain't got somebody threatening, well, I'm going to leave and take my money with me. <laughs> Like God's going to go under. (laughs) That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. God don't need me or my money, and he don't need our money. Amen? But some people think that if they leave, man, the heaven's going to shut up, Ken, that God's going to put out of order. You know what? God didn't want the money to start off with with that kind of attitude. If you're giving from that way, brother, God don't operate that way. You can sit there and jaw all you want about I gave a half. Who cares what you gave? Some people's got to get all their glory here. They'll never get none in heaven because they've gave it all here. But it's interesting. There's some people that give like you wouldn't believe and you sure don't never hear them say anything about what they're doing and it would blow your mind. But anyway, let's move on. We're not talking about sowing and reaping. The woman, her tongue brought shame. God got angry. God got angry with her and God really got uptight. God was so angry. He said, Miriam, Aaron, and Moses, get out here right now. It's almost like a uh, uh, you that, that are parents that's got more than one child it's almost like calling all your children out at one time you know what I'm saying get out here right now anybody know what I'm talking about it's got more than one in the household you know you get out here right now Jennifer saying yes you know somebody did it who did it well it weren't me well it shortened him on his own but we know that's a, a parental thing amen so it was the same magnitude here get out here right now because I heard Miriam running off at the mouth and I'm mad about it. Now this is God, I'm preaching the word to you. This is just as important as anything else we read in the Bible. 
For so long, I believe in the scriptures, we like to pick and choose what we like and dislike. But it don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. We got to receive all of the word of God. First thing we see was Miriam's tongue brought sickness because she was not sick. But because of her uncontrollable tongue and shooting off at the mouth about a person of God, now she's sick. The second thing we see was it brought shame. It, the Bible tells us, it says right here in that verse, it says, the Lord said unto Moses, um, you know, shall she not be ashamed these seven days? This is what happened because of Miriam's sin. It brought a shame in the camp. This was what was even worse from a leadership standpoint. From a leadership, her being in the leadership role kind of, you know, under Moses and Aaron. See, the whole, the whole entourage of people saw this woman's shame. You see what I'm saying? Leprosy in the Bible, we know when you had leprosy, you stay away. You got leprosy. We know that from Naaman, even though he was a king. Leprosy was kind of like, you know, when AIDS first came out, nobody didn't want to be in a room with anybody with AIDS or whatever because you didn't know how it was. You didn't want to be around anybody. But you see, it brought shame. The whole camp saw it, but they had to stop traveling. It's in this chapter where that God sentenced them to 40 years. If you, if you go home and read the epistle of Numbers, this is where the 11 days journey was transferred to a 40-year 40, 40 journey because this was where they said, you know, we can't take the land, all of the above. You read about a couple of chapters over, you read that. But right now in the setting of the Israeli journey, Israelite journey, right now where we're at in chapter 12, they were on their way. They were still within that 11-day uh, window or 11-day frame. So they had not got there yet. But because of her mouth and uncontrolling, it stopped traffic. You know what? I, I mean, from a, a minister standpoint, some, sometimes our tongues has, has, has held some of the greatest blessings from God coming our way. Because the things we say and we don't even repent of it even when we should... Some churches are that way globally. I believe the reason why some churches suffer is because, of, you know, that, that, that reason, all of the above, all, all the works there and everything. But as believers, because of Miriam's uncontrollable tongue, it stopped the progress. God is all about movement. God's about going forward. God's not about going backward. God's everything about going forward. If you find one thing about God, one, one thing you'll learn in reading and studying the Word of God, God is a God that moves forward. He, in Genesis, He's moving. In Revelations, He's moving. In Acts, He's moving. And in everywhere in between in the Bible, you see God moving. He's just constantly moving. I mean, that's just the way it is. Amen? So we see that, and that's the nature of God. But here, progress stopped because of the shame of leprosy. They had to stop. I want to reread it to you. I read it earlier. It says, um, let her shut herself out of the camp seven days, and after that let her be received again. Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not. So it held up progress. They couldn't get to their destination to the promised land because Miriam couldn't control her tongue. Wanted to talk about Moses. Well, God... Who does he think he is? What does he think he is? Let me tell you something. You know, we used to have this problem. But today in ministry, you got all these self-appointed preachers. Let me just say this now, especially those watching my live stream. Today, you got all of these self-appointed preachers and prophets and bishops, and half of them don't even know what that role is and even what it means. And they think they're above question. No man of God is above question. No person of God. So I don't wear that hat, I never have, and I never will. So we're not saying here that they did wrong by questioning him as a leader of God. That's not what I'm trying to bring out here, not by a long shot. Because let me tell you something. If I'm up here delivering something that's not the gospel, you got every right to come or to go to this leadership council and say, hey, he's, he's not preaching something that ain't in the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? That's the problem today. Too many churches aren't questioning all this nonsense that's being preached and delivered and carried on. It's not even the scriptures, not even biblical. But anyway, let that be as it may. This is not where she's, you know, she was complaining and questioning. Who does he think he is? Why is he doing that? It brought shame. You with me this morning? But the worst thing about the shame, it held up the progress. And this is what we all, this is what I've learned about not controlling my tongue. It separates me from God. You see, the Holy Spirit will not dwell in an unclean temple. Paul says anything that defiles the temple, he will not dwell in there. So me watching 
pornographic material is defiling the temple, okay? Me in places I don't have any business is defiling my temple. Me not controlling my tongue, I'm defiling the temple. We think that hey, that's okay not to control the tongue, but we, there's other stuff we shouldn't be doing. But it's all right to let my tongue go wherever it wants to go, do whatever it wants to do. It separated Miriam. You see, leprosy, if you notice it says here, but it brings it out again, and I'm going to reread it. Let her be shut out from the camp. You see, our tongue separates us. Peter, here it is. He that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from speaking evil, and his lips that they speak no guile against anyone. What we fail to realize, when we cannot control our tongue, when we allow our tongue to go uncontrollable, we're on our way to heaven, we're saved, but the Holy Spirit is not where He needs to be in our life. You understand what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit cannot minister and come to us where He needs to be because God knows that there's stuff in us that don't need to be in us. And it's contamination. Listen, everybody, get these are some people that get on our skin. You and I know that. I mean, you know, if you're like doing different things, just from a ministry aspect, you know, when, when, before God called me into the role of pastor, I worked in the music part of the church, being a musician. And if we weren't on the road traveling, and I remember we were trying to put together a choir, and, you know, that can be a blessing or a cursing because you got some of, you know, you're trying to work with everybody. And let that be as it may. And you got some that can just really get under your skin and all the above. I mean, we all have those days, is what I'm trying to say here. But we have to be careful what we allow to come out of our mouth, folks. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm giving you something God gave me. on a, God's never gave me a message on a Monday for a Sunday. It don't work that way. Normally it's Saturday or Sunday morning most of the time. But our tongue is killing us. If we do not see, if we cannot look past and see, I'm destroying things here. You see, we live in an environment today. We live in a world that is disrespectful, we live in a world that is rude. We live in a world that some children, I would like to just pull my belt out and wear them out. We live in an environment where I'd just like to be boss man for one day. And buddy, I would be a, I would be a Chuck Norris or a vigilante. I would be a Mr. Kersey. Because of sorriness and laziness. Gum smacking and texting instead of checking out of groceries. But I mean, that's where we are today. I have had to learn to accept we are in a lazy society. We're in a society with no morals, Joni, no values. That they've not, but you know what? This is what I had to learn. It's not their fault. They've not had any parental guidance. They've not had any parental training. You know that and I know that. They're not taught at home. They're not disciplined the right way. But I'm going to tell you something as a parent. Our kids are a byproduct of us. And if all they've ever heard us do is jaw and run down, they're going to grow up and we're going to reproduce it. I'm going to tell you, and it's not something I want to brag about, but I've had to set my folks down and say, listen, I'm wrong here. I have had a business talking like that. I've probably been more apologetic than I've accomplished as a parent. But I want my children to know, I don't want them to grow up jawing and gnawing at everybody and walking around all that, because I don't want sickness on my children or on their children. I don't want them to be separated from God and to bring shame. I don't want my children to endure that stuff. Amen? So therefore, I've had to correct, correct myself. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know why we think we're so perfect that we can't hold up and say, hey, I'm wrong here. What's wrong with saying I'm wrong? When do we get to the place that we don't think we make any mistakes anymore? We come in and we go out. I'm here to tell you as a man of God, if you got sickness going on in your body constantly, there's something wrong there. I'm a man of faith. This is a church of faith. We have seen cancer, COVID. We've seen some of any and everything healed in this church. You name it and we've seen it, amen. We've seen a man spend 50 some odd days in a hospital with no diagnosis, but God brought him home, amen. And God spared him and God just took him on to be with him. So we've seen all kinds of things. So it's not God's will. But more than anything, we go back to the Garden of Eden. God come in the cool of the day to meet with man. 
Now, through the Holy Spirit, He comes to us every day. But when our tongue is uncontrollable, He's not going to come to us. And let me tell you something. You get around your family, and you go to running down to church and what you don't like, or you get to running down that one and that one, and you know what? We're just running down Jesus. I want to tell you something. I mean, there's nothing wrong. Don't misinterpret me. And I don't mean this, you know, I don't want to sound harsh. But I, want to, I just want to say something to all, all of us in this room. When we run down to church, when we, we run down this, that, and the other, we are running down Jesus. You know what? There's always going to be something I don't like. I don't like it because we have seats in here. I don't see why we can't stand up the whole time and give Him praise. Amen? I don't understand why I can't preach an hour, we sing an hour, and we pray an hour, Mary Francis. I don't understand that. So if you get mad because we start at 10 or 11 or whenever, well, we all got something about the church we don't like. But at the end of the day, I'm thankful I can come to church. I'm thankful, Dickie, that I got a body that I can walk. I'm thankful that I'm in a country where we can come and I can hear the, the, mute, the piano and the singing and I can lift my hands. I'm thankful that I got a sister and a brother. I'm thankful I got some ladies that I can mix some chocolate and some men that we can talk about time out and everything else in between. Amen. I'm thankful that there is a house, there is a place in the house and if my son is sick, if my daughter is sick, that we can pray it out of them. And shame on you if you cannot control your tongue. You know, there's a lot God don't like about me and you. But we walk in, I don't like this, I don't like that. I don't like greeters at the door. I'd much rather have a greeter than to go to some first church of the refrigerator where they act like it's a burden to speak to you. At least here you got somebody grabbing you and pulling you in. I've been to churches out like they were doing me a favor. I have learned that we complain about any and where's the plant? They moved the plant. They moved the da 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 da. <laughs> One thing, as Solomon said, the eyes of man are never satisfied. The mouth of a believer <laughs> is never controlled. That's Chris's version. All of us, I'm like you, we're old. You know, I told you mine. I wish we could preach hour, sing hour, and pray an hour. I mean, this has always been my thing. We come to church on Sunday, we had this mentality. We used to think we're supposed to be here. You know, we'd stay in Sunday school an hour, hour and a half, then come out here for 30 minutes saying we're supposed to go home. We think everything's supposed to be done in a time matter. We go out here in the world, we stay out there all week long. But when we come to church, we think we're supposed to be done in 30 minutes. We'll sit there at a doctor's office six hours to hear some diagnostics, but we can't sit in church but 30 minutes. I got aches, I got pains, I got cramps. But you know what? Everywhere else we sit, we don't have any problems. You ever thought about that thing? Don't have no worry. It's just only in church that happens, sister. <laughs> oh, I'm being, I am being foolish. I'm, I'm preaching the gospel, and you know I am. I mean, we can sit on a hard bleacher and watch the grand youngins play ball and scream, yell, and holler for two hours at a time, eating bugs and eating a three-dollar hot dog and a hot Pepsi and sweat running down. Oh, but man, when it comes, I got to get out of here, man. It's twelve o'clock. I got to get home. <laughs> Something's not right with that. Oh, Chris, I'm not being foolish. I'm giving you the gospel. This, every day is the Lord's day. Every day we live, but this is Sunday, the Sabbath. This is the Lord's day. This is the day every day sto everything stops and we assemble together. Not dissemble, but assemble. Amen? We're not taking anything apart. We're coming together. So in conclusion, tongue is killing us. We need to inventory ourselves. It's not an easy thing. I, we're, all in, we're all involved in this. This is something we all deal with. This is something we don't like to discuss because some people, some people just can't take, uh, what is that word, constructive criticism. You know, some people can and some people cannot. But the Bible tells us he chastens who he loves. So when the Spirit corrects me, I'm identifying that the love of the Father is favoring me and correcting me. So I'm thankful he's correcting me so much so that through the years and I've learned to incorporate that in my prayer time. God, correct me, chasten me, convict me, reveal yourself to me. If you've heard me say, if one of you ladies can come and play, the Holy Spirit never condemns us. The Holy Spirit won't do like Miriam. It's not going to condemn us. That was satanic. The Holy Spirit will convict us and make it right. 
But until we allow the Spirit to convict us and make it right, we're separate, separate from the Spirit. You may not have a problem at all with your tongue. I hope and trust you don't. You may have a problem here and there. Or you could be saying, man, he is all, I'm not all over anybody. This was the Lord. Every bit of this came from the Lord. But our tongues gets us in a lot of trouble. Things we shouldn't say, we say we're human. We're human beings. And a good forgiven spirit will go a long way. But this is what we fail to realize. Not everybody, not everybody today has a good forgiven spirit. They have this mentality. Oh, I forgive, but I'll never forget. You understand what I'm saying? That's their mentality. So not everybody's going to have that same mentality. You're not forgiven. I forgot about it, man. Don't even bring it up. That's the way many of us are in this room here today. But not everybody has that mentality. Let us all stand. I don't want nothing to come between me and God. You know, in Peter it says, judgment must begin at the house of God. Many think that that's, you know, sinfulness and ungodliness has got to get out of the house. Yes, it does. But an uncontrollable tongue is just as sinful as anything else. If God got so mad that He come out and called them out in front of all of Israel, they were all of the children of Israel saw them. I was with somebody earlier this week, and this might have been how this subject come up, but they were sharing with me. They're like, Chris, every time I'm in the company, all they do is tear everybody down. And the person went on to say, you know, they're lucky to be alive, but they won't even thank God for that. But they're constantly tearing somebody down. As a believer, God expects us to pray for them. I'm just going to give a general order call today. I'm not going to prolong this service. There's no need to. I'm just going to ask you to find a place at this altar if you're able or build you a, a place where you're at. This morning, I want to thank all of our live stream viewers. I know many watch us by live stream. I want to thank you for your support, financially, your prayers, and everything else.